Hello, my name is Melanie and welcome to my channel, Our Tropical Soil, where you can learn more about growing food in the tropics. I am completely happy and ecstatic and like so grateful for the three banana racks that I have currently in my banana mat. I've been growing this banana mat for about two years, I think, and there's three banana racks all at once in one banana mat and I am so happy. It's pretty awesome. We're gonna have so many bananas. So I'm gonna tell you how this all ended up happening where I have three banana racks. I got my banana pup from the Going Bananas Nursery and I'll leave a link down below to that nursery so you can see it. And it was a Cavendish variety. It's a common variety. I just got it because it was familiar. And I planted it. I was giving it mulch since it was little. It was first getting um, like grass clippings and stuff like that like leaves and then now it's pretty much getting like all the garden waste that I have that it's just going over there and I also was watering it really well when it was young now it doesn't get watered that much but yeah I was watering it a lot so when I got the banana pup that I'm showing you right here I also ended up getting this plantain variety and the banana variety always grew faster than the plantain variety. I think the plantain has some fungal issues. The actual plantains when it produced had fungal problems and it seems like at the base of the plant there's some fungal issues also. But besides that, the banana was always just growing faster than the plantain. It always did better than the plantain. The Cavendish also doesn't really have anything major that affects it that I've seen. It does have like some fungal issues on the leaves, but I mean it's producing well and the bananas aren't affected by the fungal issue. When I was first learning about growing bananas, I heard a lot about removing pups and I actually have not removed any pups from my banana mat. I didn't remove any because honestly that's way more work and I'm just like not that interested in putting in that much work unless there's like a real real issue that needs to be resolved and I need to put in the work. So from what I've learned there's two types of banana pups the healthy ones and then the water suckers which aren't healthy. So you can tell them apart because the healthy pups start out growing with these really thin leaves and they get bigger and their leaves stay really thin. And that's because they're closer to the mother plant, like the corn, it's closer to the center of the corn and closer to the mother plant. So it gets a lot of its nutrients from the mother plant. So it doesn't need those big leaves to do all of the photosynthesis by itself. So with the water sucker, it's further away from the mother plant and it doesn't get all those nutrients like the healthy pup would. So it needs to grow like these big leaves when it's young to be able to photosynthesize. And you can tell because it'll be young and just have these gigantic leaves or really small and then the healthy pups will just have these really thin spear-like leaves. So it's recommended to remove water suckers because since it grows further away from the mother plant, it's overall less healthy and it won't grow so well and produce a nice banana rack like a healthy pup would. So it's normally removed to prevent the banana plant from putting in all this energy to grow in this one water sucker so that it won't produce any fruit. It's often recommended that you remove the healthy banana pups also, not just the water suckers. So you basically want to have like an adult large stem that's the one producing and then a middle one and then a really young one. And any of any other ones that come up, you're supposed to remove them, which you can do with like a shovel or like a specific tool they have to cut away the banana pup from the corn, which then you could plant in a new area and get a whole new banana mat. You only want to propagate your bananas with the healthy banana pups, not the water suckers, because again, those will not grow that well. So I was not interested in doing that work and it obviously wasn't that much of an issue. I think in a commercial setting then it probably makes sense to remove the other banana pups even if they're healthy and propagate them and stuff because there's probably a slight difference in productivity and that's why they recommend it. But I think for the home gardener you really shouldn't worry about that because then you're going to just be putting in all this work and I don't think the productivity is going to be that much of a difference. But I think you do want to remove the water suckers though because they're not going to end up producing a good banana rack if at all. And you really want to want that growing so you can just cut it at the base of the soil and then 
like let it decompose over the banana plant. Besides all the mulch and organic matter I give it and the water, I do think maybe this banana mat is doing better because it's next to my potted plants. So my potted plants have like this regular garden soil from Home Depot that I bought. And that soil has like fertilizers and stuff. And honestly, like I'd rather be using homemade compost and homemade like potting soil to put into these pots. But it's honestly like the most convenient and cheapest option. So that is what I was just using. But ideally, I want to move away from that. And yeah, so the bananas are next to the potted plants and the potted plants obviously have like leachate as the rains and when I water them and stuff and that nutrition is probably going into the soil and helping this banana plant a little bit at least so to see if the fertilizer is having a huge effect on my banana mat I want to take a pup and plant it somewhere else and see how it does and see how productive it is with just getting garden waste and water and like compost and stuff and see how well it does. I think it should do pretty well because people in Miami have banana plants growing everywhere and I don't think everyone's like fertilizing their plants on a regular basis and they still produce. So I think with love and care and no like synthetic store-bought fertilizers, then it's gonna do pretty well. So my banana mat did produce one banana rack already and it was really good. The fruit were excellent in flavor. They're really sweet and they were really big but now with three banana racks you know there's only so much nutrition to go around so i think that maybe the banana racks will be smaller this time and the fruit will be smaller and maybe they won't taste as good but i'm not 100 percent sure about that because i haven't tried them they haven't ripened up so we'll have to just wait and see how it does but i don't think there'll be that much of a difference in flavor i think maybe there'll be a difference in fruit size though and there's also the practice of thinning fruit on fruit trees, which is where you remove some of the fruit to allow the remaining fruit to get bigger. So I think there's probably a similar effect with that in the bananas. So yeah, if you wanna have really big bananas, I think then maybe you should try and keep it to just one rack per banana mat at a time. And that way it could input all of its nutrition into that banana rack and you can get some really big bananas. But overall, I feel like it's more work to start removing all these bananas and I'd rather just let them kind of go crazy and produce a bunch of banana rocks because it's pretty cool. Right here, I'm gonna leave a video for you to watch next about my tropical fruit orchard that I have. And if you like this video, don't forget to like it down below and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos.